All right, so the last part here in chapter um, 14 talks about blood typing. So we have four main different blood types, A, B, AB, and O. And you can be positive or negative. That really has uh, nothing to do with um, the particular sugars, which is what we're going to focus on um, today in talking about your blood type. The positive and negative has to do with a different factor, whether or not you have it or not. So if you're B positive, you do have it. If you're B negative, you don't. But in terms of how do you determine whether you're A, B, A, B, or O, that has everything to do with particular sugars which attach to a protein on your red blood cells. So each blood type kind of contains a common core of monosaccharides. And these monosaccharides are the ones shown on this slide galactose, fucose, and then this N-acetyl-D-glucosamine, which is like a glucose that's modified with an amine, right, which you guys know what an amine is. Notice you have a nitrogen there. Um, so this is going to be a common uh, backbone for all of these blood types. So what you'll see on this slide is type A and type B have this common core of these three sugars. And even if I go to the next slide where it's type O, there's that common core of those three sugars. Now, coming back here, though, what you'll notice is that type A, attached to those, that common core, there is an N-acetyl-D-galactosamine attached there. If you're type B, like I am, I have a D-galactose attached to the other D-galactose, right? And if you're type O, you don't have anything attached there. And then if you're type AB, you have a mixture of these two here. You actually have both of those, right? Um, so if you're A, you only have the top. If you're B, you only have the bottom. If you have AB, you're both. And if you're type O, you have neither. Now, the blood type from that you have is largely determined by the antibodies that are in your blood. So you have those sugars, and you're body makes antibodies um, to fight off if you were to have the wrong type of blood put in you. So, for instance, people with type O blood. So if you know if you're a type O blood, you probably, in the blood bank, knows that they contact you frequently because they try to get you to donate blood because you're a universal donor. Because people with type O blood do not have antibodies um, or people with other blood types don't have antibodies to type O. So in other words, if I'm type B, I have antibodies that recognize this D-galactose. Let me circle it in a different color. Um, I have antibodies against that D-galactose that's there. All right, so I have antibodies that will recognize something there. If I were to receive type O blood and I get this, I, the antibodies aren't going to recognize anything as being foreign there, and I'm not going to have any negative response from it. So because of that, uh, people with type um, O blood are universal donors. Now, people with type AB blood, um, if you have AB blood and you have a mixture of both of these, you're actually a universal recipient because you can take blood from anyone. If you get type A blood, your body recognizes that N-acetyl-D-galactosamine that's there is normal. If you get type B blood, it recognizes the D-galactose as normal. And if you get type O blood, again, there's nothing out here for any your, your body to recognize as foreign. So if you're type AB, you're a universal recipient. So that's a good thing if you ever need blood because you can take blood from anyone. All right? So... This is kind of how the blood typing works. It has everything to do with the sugars that are attached to the, the protein in your red blood cells. And then the response you get, whether you can accept um, a particular type of blood type, for instance, in a transfusion, has everything to do with the antibodies that your body has um, depending on your particular blood type.